Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings. So, um, as you can see, this is The Lyra Novels by Patricia Reedy. Um, this is one of her earliest series, and parts of this are, they feel a little odd. Um, so I'll be talking about the first book um, in the series that she wrote, Shadow Magic. Um, I do own a paper copy of this, but with the re-release of the whole collected series, see, here's the, here's the cover of a copy that is published, um, well, this, this is dated, this is an, an official first publisher, I believe, publishing, I believe, of 1982, with cover art by Walter Velez. Um, and it, it shows a very fantasy, traditional picture of, you know, an extremely scantily clad young woman with marvelous boobage. Um, the thing is that, um, that this series, uh, it often feels a little bit like, like, Parts of it are just a little bit sideways of of what's actually important. It, it, and it's not that what's going on isn't vastly important. It's, it's more that these feel like single events that are happening, but don't necessarily, that they're not culminating in the grand final battle. This isn't the final defeat. It's not, it, it's, it's these oddly non-epic feeling epic stories. It, it's so hard for me to describe, and I'm not entirely certain that other people would see it the way I do. Um, this particular cover, you have... Um, on the right is a weird, spelled W-Y-R-D. And on the left, the fish person is a, uh, you know, I don't remember exactly what they're called, but it's something like the Niara. And it, they're, they're, they're water people, ocean people. And I don't know whether the one in the middle is supposed to be, uh, Alethea, who becomes the queen of Alkyra, or whether that is supposed to be uh, Queen Iniscara of the She, who are basically elves, because, you know, there are always elves. Um, it's, it's a little bit difficult to tell, given the situation. Anyhow, so, um, for the bulk of this, I'm not going to be uh, having this cover up, however delightfully exciting this cover may be, um, I'm going to have this cover up mainly because I don't own any other books in the series, and I read this whole series in the ebook re-release format, and so in order to ensure that I have a matching set of covers, which is entirely unimportant, but there you go, uh, I'm just going to stick with this, and the other books in this series, Harp of Imac Thistle and Daughter of Witches, Raven Ring, etc., etc., are just going to have these, uh, these matching covers instead. So, Shadow Magic is a story mostly about two people and a slightly perfunctory, uh, a, a slightly perfunctory romance. Um, it's, it's an unfortunate, uh, quality in a lot of books uh, of the fantasy genre, the perfunctory romance, the, the two people who wind up together at the end, but not in quite enough time was spent building up a relationship between them that you might even be able to see as here, sort of the opening bits and hints and indications that there might be a romance, but there isn't really enough time spent building it up. But anyhow, so the book opens with uh, the perspective, uh, more or less, of, uh, of Morin, who is a journeyman trader um, that is 
you know, traders being an actual sort of guildy group of people who make it their lives and jobs to cart stuff around, um, and that there's an actual educational component to this, and he's a journeyman as opposed to, you know, a master or an apprentice. Um, and he's become friends with Har, who is, member, who is a member of a noble family in the city of Bren, which is where, they, where this starts. Um, but the odd thing about this is, while we periodically get Morin's perspective... Um, it, periodically, the book is really about Aletheia, but we don't spend all of our time on Aletheia's perspective, and indeed the book opens as though it's going to be about Morin when it's actually about Aletheia. Uh, so, it's, that throws you a little bit off kilter. Um, an interesting thing, of course, is that about this re-release, um, and it is worth reading the introduction of the re-release alone for that, is that when they decided to re-release her Lyra series, um, uh, the publishers asked Patricia Reedy if she wanted to maybe, you know, clean up the books, fix up a few things. You know, as, as any good author will, will consider doing, uh, upon republishing, if given the opportunity to say, you know, maybe I want to tighten up a sentence here, change a character's perspective slightly, have a slightly different descriptive word there. And she uh, apparently changed uh, nearly, she apparently cut out about a thousand words out of the first chapter. Um, and it does read differently, not not differently in terms of what happens or in terms of what's said really, but she does change uh, change it from starting from a sort of omniscient third-person narrator to a tight uh, third-person perspective, meaning that instead of starting sort of, we are watching the traders uh, trundle into town and watching all of their wagons pull up and stop in the inn yard, etc., etc. She tightened it down to starting with, from Morin's direct perspective, right at the start, um, uh, right from the start after the wagons have all parked and he is taking part in uh, helping unload them. It it makes a difference, but it's not really a hugely significant one. Um, and that's one of the things that makes this first book feel a little bit off, is that the whole book here is... It's like it's slated to be from Morin's perspective, and parts of it are from Morin's perspective, but it's actually about Aletheia. But unlike something like, say, the Black Jewels trilogy series... Um, by Anne Bishop, you go to Anne Bishop, the whole story is from, uh, not, uh, the, it, it is from not the central character's perspective, um, and it, it's, it's from the perspective of all of these men around her, rather than being her perspective, but here, we get some of Aletheia's perspective and some of Morin's perspective, but it's just, it's this odd, it's this odd sensation of where the focus is actually supposed to be. It, it, it skews your sense of where the focus is supposed to be, and it leaves me, as a reader, just a smidgen unsettled. Uh, it, it's just a little bit, a little bit mildly confuzzling. Um, so, in this story, uh, you're dealing with a universe, with one of those universes with the lost magics of thousands and thousands of years ago, um, that in this case you're dealing with people who have gradually drifted apart from the other, th uh, the other three races, such that, uh, uh, the Nerea, uh, again, I never remember what they're called. I don't take notes. I'm not going to spend three hours flipping through the book hoping to find the word. Uh, the She and the Weird uh, are 
you know, they're kind of, they're peoples who are naturally magical, unlike the humans who are usually not. Um, and the humans and these other three have gradually drifted apart, uh, such that humans to an extent have started to even think of the she and weird and, and Nereas as, as being, uh, pure fiction. And so this, this book sort of chronicles a reconnection between these and, uh, between these and the humans of the uh, country of Alkyra. Um, and th this, and, you know, the return of an ancient evil that they have to defeat, that they managed to defeat by the skin of their teeth and the luck that the ancient evil hadn't fully broken loose to begin with, allowing them to do it in one shot. Um, and... You know, there's, it's an enjoyable book, but I wouldn't say it's Patricia Reedy's best book. I wouldn't say any of the books in this series are really her best book. Shadow Magic in particular, you can see the seams. Um, and you can see the seams in the same way that you can see the seams in her book, Talking to Dragons, that um, it's the thing about early efforts by amateur authors is that... For, you know, if you're not a super genius, brilliant author of who is, you know, one of those Mozart-type people who are just amazing by the time they're ten, unless you are that, there there are always going to be seams in early books. Um, and Shadow Magic, it has these. Um, you know, it's an enjoyable book. It's fun and uh, the characters are are interesting. A couple of them are occasionally a little bit doofy, but that's fine because, you know, people are sometimes a little bit doofy. Um, notice my highly technical linguistic use of the word doofy. Um, but I, it, it's... It's a good, solid, fun fantasy novel read if you like that kind of thing. Uh, the interesting thing about the Lyra series, which is something that she brings up in the foreword to this particular collection, uh, going back to the collection for a moment, and that is that this isn't a series in a traditional way where these are all books about the same person, or that they are books that follow one upon another within sort of the same limited timeline. Uh, this book and the next book in the series sort of take place at approximately the same time, but the next book in the series is taking place like 3,000 miles away in a pseudo-medieval universe where they've vaguely gotten news that there's a new queen in al Qaeda who's done some stuff. But that's all they know because none of them have anything to do with al Qaeda. They're basically an ocean away. Um, and... Other books in this series are taking place thousands of years in the past, and, uh, you know, they're all very, very scattered geographically and in terms of timing. And so there's an aspect whereby this series is a little bit of a little bit of a, uh, a world builder series rather than a storyteller's. It's the, the one aspect of this series that is a little bit of a world builder series, um, well, no, I take it back. This really is a storyteller series. Um, I, I may talk about the world builder versus storyteller thing at some other point, um, mostly because my examples about world builders versus storytellers are all about, um, are, are all about George Lucas. So, uh, Star Wars not being a book may not necessarily make it onto this. Um, but, uh, in short, it's, it's an unusual series, um, perspective wise. And this first book is unusual in the perspective ways that I've already mentioned. Uh, and I have several more books to go in this series and I'll see you all next week.